In this video, I will be discussing electron pushing arrows as it comes up in resonance structures and in reaction mechanisms. Your science courses, like chemistry, consisted of a lot of math. In organic chemistry, you're actually asked to think. Organic chemistry is like a giant puzzle where the electron movement is the key to solving this puzzle. And sadly, many students arrive at Orgo 2 and still don't know how to move electrons, so I will try to break this down for you step by step in the hopes that this will make mechanisms understandable and even fun to figure out. A chemical reaction is simply the flow of electrons. Say I have atom A with a lone pair of electrons that wants to attack atom B. I show this reaction by starting my arrow at the lone pair on A and ending my arrow on B. Since electrons are the moving component in this reaction, the arrow has to start at the electron, not at B or any positive charge that may be on the atom. After showing the electron pushing arrow, I show a yield sign and verify the result of these electrons moving. In this case, since the blue electrons on atom A attacked atom B, I now have a bond formed between A and B made up of these electrons. Since the electrons are in bond form, atom A no longer has a lone pair of electrons. You will come across two types of reaction arrows when looking at movement of electrons. The first is a double-headed arrow, and the second is a single-headed arrow. A double-headed arrow represents the movement of two electrons, and this is typical in most chemical reactions. The single-headed arrow represents the movement of just one electron, and this is typical in radical reactions. These electron-pushing arrows will show up in two major aspects of your organic chemistry course. Electron-pushing in resonance helps show you how you go from one resonance structure to the other resonance structure by showing the movement of electrons. The second area where this shows up is in mechanisms. A reaction mechanism shows you how and why a reaction happens by showing what electrons attack what atom and what happens as a result of these attacks. As you probably noticed by now, organic chemistry is nothing but mechanisms, mechanisms, and even more mechanisms. So if you understand how and why electrons react the way they do, these mechanisms will become very simple, very obvious, and a lot of fun to figure out. Let's use the carboxylate anion as an example. I will start by drawing one of the resonance structures and taking a quick formal charge. Carbon should have four valence electrons, has four electrons directly attached, formal charge is zero. Oxygen on top should have six valence electrons, six electrons directly attached, formal charge is zero. Oxygen on the right should have six valence electrons, has seven directly attached, Formal charge is negative one. An important feature of this molecule is the carbonyl group. The carbonyl oxygen has a partial negative charge and the carbonyl carbon has a partial positive charge. This separation of charge so close to the negative oxygen is what drives the resonance effect. To help you see the resonance more clearly, I will swap two of the oxygen's electrons for blue electrons and I will swap one of the carbon to oxygen bonds for a purple bond. Resonance always starts at your most negative electron pair. In this case, I choose one pair on the negative oxygen randomly. I show my arrow going from the blue electrons towards the positive carbon. These electrons will wind up making a bond between carbon to oxygen. As a result, carbon will have too many bonds to avoid this instability, carbon will kick out one of the bonds connecting the second oxygen. I will show this by starting my arrow at the bond and ending at the oxygen, showing that the bonding electrons collapse to form a lone pair on the oxygen. Now I have to show what happened as a result of these electron pushing arrows. The blue electrons, instead of showing them as a lone pair of electrons, I now show them as a bond between carbon and oxygen. The purple electrons, which connected carbon to oxygen, are now shown as a lone pair on the oxygen atom. I take a quick formal charge to ensure that I haven't gained or lost any electrons in the process. Now the molecule on the right has a negative charge near a partial positive carbon, which is attached to a partially negative oxygen, and so the cycle continues. I draw a double-headed arrow between the two structures and surround them in brackets, 
shown that these are my two resonant structures for the carboxylate anion. Let's look at another example. Recognize that I have a negative oxygen atom next to a double bond. Once again, I will swap out two of my electrons for a different color and change the color of the carbon to carbon double bond. Resonance always starts at the most negative electrons, so I show my arrow starting at the electrons and forming a bond between the carbon holding a double bond and the oxygen. As a result, the double bond has to collapse away from this carbon and onto the second carbon atom holding the bond. The blue lone pair of electrons formed a double bond between the carbon to oxygen and the purple double bond now forms a lone pair on the carbon that held this double bond. Doing a formal charge on a line structure molecule is a little more complicated and there are two ways to go about it. The first one is to look at your original structure and try to figure out where you had hydrogens to know how many bonds you have on carbon. Of the carbons in question, this carbon has four bonds, so no hydrogens, and the second carbon of the double bond has only three visible bonds, so I know there was one hydrogen there. Hydrogens don't move in a resonance structure, so I know there is still one hydrogen on the carbon holding the lone pair of electrons. A quick formal charge on this carbon shows me where I should have had four valence electrons, I have two electrons directly attached where carbon is bound to another carbon, I have one electron where carbon is bound to hydrogen, and I have my two electrons from my lone pair giving me five. Four minus five is negative one. So the negative charge from the oxygen was transferred to the carbon, no electrons were gained or lost, and this is the second structure of my resonance. The second way to do a formal charge after breaking a carbon to carbon double bond is look at what happened to each of the carbon. The carbon that was connected to the oxygen had a total of four bonds and when that double bond moved it still has a total of four bonds so the formal charge hasn't changed. The second carbon which held the double bond no longer has a bond but instead has an additional electron. Adding an extra electron to an atom reduces the charge and that's where I get the formal charge of negative one. Before we look at electron pushing arrows and mechanisms, we have to define two important terms, nucleophile and electrophile. If you look at the word itself, you can derive the meaning by breaking it down. Nucleophile sounds like nucleus loving, and this describes a molecule that is positive seeking. Electrophile has the words electron loving, and this defines a molecule that is negative seeking. A molecule that is positive seeking will usually be is negative, highly electronegative, or partially negative. Examples can be a molecule that ends in RO minus, such as the carboxylate anion we looked at, the partially negative oxygen in a water molecule, or the lone pair of electrons on a nitrogen atom. An electrophile will be a positive or partially positive atom or molecule. This can be something like a proton or the positive end of a nitronium or hydronium. As you start to get familiar with mechanisms, you should recognize that every mechanism starts out with a nucleophile attacking an electrophile, some transfer of charge, and a new nucleophile attacking another electrophile until the reaction is complete. In future videos, I will address each of the important mechanisms that come up in your organic course, but for now I will just show you an overview so you understand the concept about why mechanisms happen the way they do. Many of the mechanisms you see will be acid-catalyzed reactions. The H plus in solution came off a molecule or an acid such as hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, or phosphoric acid. Say you're given a strong acid with a pH of 2, this number two implies that the ratio of H plus to water is one in 100. An increased pH simply means that the ratio of water to your H plus increases to say one in 1,000 or 10,000 and so on. Given that H plus is surrounded by so many water molecules, it will never remain in solution by itself. Instead, it will be picked up by a water molecule. Recognize that the H plus is an electrophile and the oxygen on the water molecule, given that it has a partial negative charge, 
will be a nucleophile. To show the proton being picked up by the water molecule, I draw an arrow starting at the lone pair on oxygen going towards the hydrogen. This shows me the nucleophile grabbing my electrophile, resulting in a hydronium molecule. I will show the electrons, the nucleophilic electrons in green. So now I have a bond forming between the original attacking electrons to the hydrogen. The other pair of electrons on the oxygen were unaffected and are the only lone pair remaining. If I do a quick formal charge on my oxygen, I should have six valence electrons. I have only five directly attached, giving me a charge of plus one. A second common mechanism will be the pi electrons in a carbon to carbon double bond attacking a different molecule. The pi electrons in a carbon to carbon double bond are considered more negative because they go above and below the molecule and therefore it will be nucleophilic. If I look at a molecule such as HX where X is a halogen, the halogen is partially negative making the hydrogen partially positive, making this portion of my molecule electrophilic. As a result, the nucleophilic pi bond will reach out and grab the hydrogen of my HX molecule. Since hydrogen can only have one bond, the bond holding hydrogen to X will collapse onto the X itself for the first part of my mechanism. To show the result of this attack, I will first highlight all the electrons that participated. The first is the second bond in my carbon to carbon double bond, and the second are the electrons which held the hydrogen onto the X atom. One of the carbon atoms now gets to hold on to the hydrogen. The two electrons that held the pi bond together are now shown as holding the hydrogen atom onto the carbon. The second carbon which participated in the pi bond is now deficient and gets a positive charge due to its formal charge. The two electrons which held hydrogen to atom X have collapsed onto X, giving X an additional lone pair for a total of eight electrons. Halogens should only have seven electrons. Given that this one has eight, I get a formal charge of negative one. To ensure you did the mechanism correctly, look at your starting products. I have no charge on my carbon molecule and no charge on HX, giving me a total starting charge of zero. Looking at my products, I have a positive charge on my first molecule, a negative charge on my second atom, again for a total charge of zero. I will discuss the mechanism of this reaction in greater detail in an upcoming video. There are two types of bond cleavages, heterolytic and homolytic. Heterolytic comes from the word hetero, which means different. When I show a mechanism where both electrons from a bond collapse onto one atom, this is a heterotype cleavage because the C atom gets zero electrons, but the D atom gets two electrons. In homolytic cleavage, which comes from the word homo meaning the same, one electron collapses to each of the atoms that hold the bond. Atom A gets one electron, atom B gets one electron, showing that each got the same amount. Unlike heterolytic cleavage, homolytic bond cleavage gives me radicals, where a radical is a single electron, as in the A and B radical formed by breaking apart this bond. So be careful when you draw your arrows to show your radical with a half arrowhead, but show your standard bond reaction with a double arrowhead. I hope you found this video very useful. Please show your appreciation by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you have any questions, I will be happy to help you with them. Simply post your questions in the comments below. You can also email me your questions to tutorials at leahforsci.com. You can find me online at leah, spelled L-E-A-H, the number four, SCI.com. You can also find me right here on my YouTube channel, Leia for Sci Tutorials, or search for Leia for Sci on Facebook and Twitter.